Welcome and thanks for joining us for today's webinar. Facing shifts in IT priorities due to COVID-19, COVID how SolarWinds can help. I'm Mark Smith on the government marketing team and I'm kicking off today's event. We'll get started in a moment, but first let's cover a few housekeeping items. The webcast is being recorded and will be sent out in a few days along with slides. Phones are muted and participants are encouraged to type questions into the Q&A tab on the right side of your screen. Our speaker today is Kevin Devlos, a sales engineer on our government team, and he'll be presenting the slides in a demonstration. I'll be back to help with the Q&A at the end of the webinar. Kevin, please take it from here. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. My name's Kevin. Uh, I've been with SolarWinds for uh, several months here. Uh, just a little bit of background about me. I was a customer of SolarWinds for uh, several enterprise companies, uh, moved on to professional services, and now I'm here with SolarWinds. Uh, really enjoying my time here. So today's topics we're going to talk about, we're going to go, our agenda is we're going to go over, uh, we're going to uh, revise in the IT operation, uh, consolidating and modernizing uh, kind of your network after COVID-19. We're going to talk about cybersecurity and the uh, product SolarWinds uh, has that can help you do all this together. Uh, then we're going to go through a demo demonstration. And then after that, we will uh, follow up with some Q&A. All right, so just a little bit about SolarWinds before we kick this off. Uh, we were founded in 1999, so a little over 20 years uh, we've been in this marketplace. Uh, we're headquartered out of Austin. We have a, our federal office is out of Reston, Virginia. Uh, we're number one in our network management space. Uh, we're the leader among monitoring and, and management software. Uh, for those who are kind of new to SolarWinds, uh, we have a very large IT community. Uh, it's called THWAC. Uh, we have uh, a little over 150,000 plus registered members. Uh, we have a very strong IT community that provides a lot of uh, customer perspective information, uh, good community sharing. Uh, we're, in, we're in 499 out of the 500 Fortune companies. Uh, also, we're in every branch of the DOD, uh, as well as pretty much every in, uh, so, uh, civilian and intelligence agency uh, out there. So uh, we have experience. Uh, we've been around for the wall a while. We're number one in our space. Uh, and we have a lot of support, both from uh, our customers. All right. Uh, continuing on. So you know, SolarWinds is built on you know, needs, right? Uh, it's geek built. Uh, we have a large user community base. Uh, one thing that we pride about SolarWinds is that we try to keep things focused on the network professional. Uh, we want to make it easy, efficient, affordable, uh, and easy to use. Uh, we have a, a, a our platform is growing pretty much uh, you know yearly, quarterly. Uh, we have quite a few different modules and products and tools. Uh, the Ryan platform has uh, been growing uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, we're starting to get more into hybrid IT. You know, things are shifting. Uh, we're starting to provide more uh, MSP as well. So we want to make sure that things are quick, easy, affordable for, for you. All right. Kind of on the same theme here, we want to keep it simple, full, simple but powerful. We want to grow with you as well. You know, we want to be able to scale. Uh, I've seen, you know, in my experience, you know, some very small customers, maybe a handful of network devices to a full-blown enterprise company where they have you know, quite a few additional polling engines, you know, hundreds of thousands of devices and you know, multiple teams. So it can grow, right? It can grow with a small company into a medium company, a medium company into a large company, a larger company into an enterprise company. It's very scalable uh, and scalable. Uh, we can deliver complete visibility both uh, as far as a, you know, locally and as far as like a hybrid IT, you know, where everything's going in the cloud nowadays, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're application-centric, right? Uh, there are some things that we've added in the last uh, few versions. Uh, we've increased our network insight. We've increased the scale of monitors you can have, up to 400,000 uh, NP elements now. Uh, we have some really nice features such as NetPath, uh, AppStack, and PerfStack. Moving on. All right, so revisiting the IT operations. All right. 
So it's been a little over six months since really we've seen the impact of COVID-19. And for the most part, I think a lot of the organizations have put out the fires, right? Uh, there was a huge shift from work from the office, work from home. Uh, that, you know, obviously created a lot of, uh, of, of problems and situations. You know, you're going to have VPN saturation, uh, a lot more customers coming in remote. Uh, there's some security issues that pop up when people are working from remote. You have a lot more WebEx, Zoom, Teams meeting probably now than you have been before. So things have been shifting, right? The last six months, things have been shifted. So now there's actually a, a new baseline. And what SolarWinds can do is actually kind of provide you that new baseline because now you know, things are kind of more off maybe into the cloud. Uh, things are more off into the office space, right? But, you know, things are still changing. Just because we're kind of on hold, things are moving around, doesn't mean that IT stops, right? Okay, we'll press on. <clears throat> so the next thing is modernization. Okay, just to see, you know, things are shifting now. Things are changing. Uh, things have changed, right? Now you have to come up with a new plan. Uh, now you have a new baseline. Okay, maybe you're seeing uh, uh, less resources being used on one particular application or one particular services, <clears throat> but now you're seeing something new, right? Now you're going to new traffic patterns, new things that are coming in. Well, you want to be able to baseline that, see what the changes are, and making sure that you're planning ahead, right? That makes sure you're planning your budget, making sure that you have realities, making sure that you're doing those things that you did before COVID-19 with your know, product you know, uh, replacement, you know, those kind of things, continu business continuity. So, you know, there are some, some good things that happen with COVID, you know, with the remote, but then, you know, there's also some changes that happen as well that you have to adjust to. All right, consolidate and modernize. So now things are starting to probably consolidate more in your offices. You're probably moving a few more things to the cloud. Uh, you're using PaaS maybe as an alternative. Uh, you're continuing to you know, replace outdated infrastructure. All these things are still happening. Even though you don't have people to the offices right now, uh, you know, your switches still need updating. Your routers still need updating. Those office uh, devices still need updating. They still need to be monitored. You still have to plan for capacity. You still have to you continue to monitor those things and then adjust to your new needs. And those new needs are could be quite a few different things. You know, more VPN, maybe more bandwidth, uh, more control, uh, those kind of things. And Solar Ones is going to help you kind of consolidate all that information and then modernize it to where you need to add these new assets to, right? Okay, let's press on. <clears throat> so, you know, app, app performance has become a, or has always been a big deal, especially now that people are working more remotely, kind of off, um, uh, out of sight. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and things are become more virtualization, right? So you want to see what those virtualizations, those dependencies, uh, those resources are being used, and how to plan for the future, how to plan for that capacity planning. Maybe things have changed. Maybe now that a server that was being you know, overutilized, now it's hardly being, is being underutilized. Well, you need to make changes. You need to find those things, find those changes, find those new baselines, and then adjust to it. And SolarWinds is going to help you do that kind of show you the path to that, kind of pick up those, those differences, those different baselines, those different uh, things that are happening now that you know, people are working more remotely. All right. Security, cybersecurity, always important. Uh, obviously, you need to have some of that basic hygiene, right? Making sure that your, your uh, antiviruses are up to date, making sure that people are not logging in. Uh, and inappropriate, making sure that people have the right accesses to certain things now. Uh, it's become a, maybe a little bit more harder to control security now that everyone's kind of dispersed, uh, not everyone's in the office. So now you have to kind of push that, that security out even further, just not inside the border or inside your, your network, but actually out further, further where you have maybe like a zero trust kind of uh, policy now where you don't trust anything and everything needs to be uh, segmented. Uh, important about this, you know, is when you're talking to security, is that your know, logs, you know, checking your logs, uh, SIM, uh, our SIM product tool, you know, you can normalize, you can monitor threats, you can see things that are coming in, you can see users that are being, uh, that are logging on, that are being logged off, uh, where they're logging in, uh, quite a good information with uh, the logs and making sure that you're up to date on it. All right. 
So what products would help us do all this? Well, we have quite a few products to look at. So uh, Network Performance Monitor, our flagship, uh, you know, this is the model, This is the tool of the module that's going to give you those key performance indicators. You know, your CPU, your memory, your bandwidth, your your storage, your utilization, your latency. So these are going to give you your key stats. Uh, it's going to be able to discover things in your network, finding out you know uh, what versions of uh, Cisco to iOSs you're running. You know, those kind of things, uh, so that you're up to date, making sure you're within compliances. Uh, the next thing you know we can look at it. We're going to look at is NTA network traffic analyzer. So not only okay, so we're having bandwidth, right? But what is that bandwidth? Is that bandwidth you know Netflix traffic? Is it Facebook traffic? Is it actual business traffic? So NTA is going to provide that detailed bandwidth information for okay, how much VPN traffic am I using now that you know we have most of my users at home? Uh, so it's going to give you that information so that you can plan for the future and you can make those changes. Network configuration man are very important both for Every day backs up in your configurations, but also for security, for compliances, making sure that you are uh, compliant with just the STIGs, you know, PCI, those kind of things. And then we have SAM as well, server application monitor, to monitor your applications, making sure they're healthy, your SQL, your IIS services, uh, those kind of things. And then in, in the same thread as uh, security, we have server, uh, SolarWinds server uh, configuration monitor. Uh, which can do things sort of like NCM on the network side, but it's actually on the server side where you can see like registry changes. Uh, anything that's changed maybe somewhere on a file, those kind of things. You can track hardware and software inventory configurations. Uh, see whenever maybe an IP address or a hardware device uh, like your um, uh, OS was updated or did patches. Uh, another thing we are going to look at is universal device tracker. Uh, which actually tracks devices that are plugged in, that plug into your network. For example, let's say you want to track a user who is maybe plugging into uh, a device somewhere is on your in your network, and you want to track that user, where do they plug in at, where they log in at, what they log into, uh, and UDT can track that. And also can do things for such as watch lists, watch lists where you're looking for a specific MAC address or a specific user to log in, and you want to go ahead and track that. You want to see, okay, when this user logs in, I need to talk to him because he was doing something, or this laptop's been missing for a month, you know, so uh, whenever this MAC address comes online, I want to get an email or a notification to say, hey, this laptop is plugged into this switch on this port in this room, so you can go back and, and reclaim your asset. So uh, <clears throat> these modules are great. You know, they're going to gather the device. They're going to give you the utilization, your usage, and they're going to show you some dependency data. Like, you know, this application it belongs to this SQL server. So if this SQL server goes down, you know, it's going to affect this application and all the users that are connected to it. Awesome. All right, so the next thing we're talking about is consolidate and modernize. Uh, this kind of screams VMAN, right? Uh, virtual, virtualization, uh, Hyper-V, your ESX. Uh, what VMAN can do is it's actually one of those tools that actually, I think, uh, pays for itself. But it can do things like uh, find the sprawl in your virtualization. Okay, do I have too much CPU on one machine but not enough on the other? Uh, other fun things that I can do, we can do like a what-if modeling scenario, for instance. Let's say you have a cluster of ESX hosts and you need to add 30 more VMs for some reason because uh, you know, we need more users to, you know, we, this application is going to be overused now because we have people that are working remotely. So you can say, okay, what happens if I add another 10 VMs to my cluster, you know, would that support it or do I need to add more resources? So that kind of goes in the thread of optimization of VMs, like do I have enough memory, do I have too much memory, you know, those kind of things. Do I have too much storage? So we're looking for a balance. Uh, and that's what VMAN does, kind of balances out your resources for your virtualization. Uh, we talked a little bit about NCM, uh, doing your backup changes, uh, your configuration backup changes, setting baselines. You can do things for compliance. You can do things to automate uh, change configurations. Um, so there's a lot of NCM. NCM is one of my favorite tools, me being a network guy, because uh, it does those things, bulk changes, that makes my life or made my life very, very simple. Uh, server configuration monitor, that actually is a lot like NCM, but it tracks the server changes, registry changes, uh, application database changes, config changes on the server, and those kind of things. Uh, NetPath, uh, NetPath is a, a great feature. Uh, it actually kind of demystifies the internet for you, because uh, what it does is if you do a simple trace route, you know, from point A to point Z, 
uh, it's going to show you that path there, you know, going through the ISP, going through the internet, going wherever. That path will actually track out, uh, will actually map out multiple, all the multiple paths that that uh, device can go to. So if you have uh, like Azure or something like that, you know, there's multiple ways to get to an Azure database. And we'll go into a little about a little bit about NetPath. That's a very good feature. Something I wish I had uh, when I was doing my uh, network management. Okay, good deal. All right, so security. Uh, some of the uh, products that really that are 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 set up for security, as we talked about, NCM. It can do the policy change, uh, policy compliance. It can do the reports, which we'll get into. It can show you where those compliances are, where you're failing, where you have gaps in, and then how to change it. Even automate and automate those changes. So if you run a report and you find out 50 machines doesn't have the line console setting to, to shut down after five minutes, you can push a script out to those 500 machines uh, and get that taken care of and get in compliance very quickly. Uh, in, uh, SCM, Server Configuration Monitor, same thing, can track compliances for servers and operating systems. Uh, with this new version release of SCM, we actually added DISA stick compliance, which we'll go into a little bit as well. Uh, it only supports 2016, but um, it's very good, very powerful tool, and we're building on that uh, as we speak. And then last, uh, Security Event Manager, or SIM, that collects all your logs from your uh, network devices, from your servers, uh, and they can pull things in, like you know, use a login failure, you can do some SIM stuff with it, uh, you can do other things for... Uh, uh, tracking changes, if a policy, a uh, user changes, it gets put into a policy, an Active Directory policy, maybe an admin policy, you can track those changes so you can see what was happening and what was moved. So if, you, if there's a compromise, you can go back and do some forensics and find out, well, it looks like Matt was at it, you know, a day before all this changed to this uh, admin group, and then this is why we have, now we're having issues, so. Good information. <laughs> all right. Let's get into our demo now. Cool. Okay. So, <clears throat> to start bringing nodes or devices into SolarWinds and start monitoring devices, there's not too much you need. You just need the IP space subnet of the devices that you want to bring into net, into uh, SolarWinds or NPM. Uh, usually, that's going to be SNMP, uh, WMI, ping and also possibly an agent if you're looking at that. Then once you're done with that, it'll actually go through and scan all your networks, try to connect to them, either SMP, you know, WMI, uh, read the MIB uh, database, find out what vendors, some other information, list the resources, and then start monitoring, um, monitoring your devices. Uh, and things that'll pull out right out of the box are things like you know, your vendor uh, information, device type, uh, those kind of things. So once we bring a node in, we'll start monitoring interfaces, we'll monitor CPU, we're monitoring storage, memory, latency, and to kind of see what kind of information we're pulling in, uh, we're going to kind of pick on this new 2811. Uh, looks like we have an issue with it. If we hover over it, uh, it should bring up some information, but it doesn't. So we can drill down. We know we're having some problems with this one, 2811 WAN. And right out of the battle, so we're already pulling some information. So uh, we have our management uh, uh, widget here, which actually there's some fun, some fun things you can do here. You can do an SSH directly to from here. You can uh, pull up perf uh, analysis. You can do analyze log as well. So right here, you have a nice little uh, management dashboard so you don't have like SSH or pull up putty to you know, remote desktop or do anything like that. Uh, we're pulling some really good information. Looks like we're looking at interfaces, three interfaces. We're pulling some hardware information. This is always good. So if you see a fan go out, maybe a power supply, uh, temperature, you might have like an old ch a chassis somewhere in a closet that doesn't get good ventilation, so you want to monitor the temperature on that. Uh, other things we can pull in as well are some vital stats. So here we'll see our CPU, uh, our memory, um, CPU low latencies, uh, well, this top five application, this is actually NetFlow, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. You know, pulling in, it looks like this interface has a lot of NetFlow, so big surprise. Okay, uh, looks like here we have a few, uh, have an issue, we have some packet loss, uh, response time is 515 milliseconds, that will all, you know, obviously cause us some issues uh, for our users. 
Uh, other things that will pull in as well from uh, NPM is our interfaces. So here we're monitoring three interfaces. Uh, we're showing our bandwidth utilization. Looks like we have some other issues. We have some in and out discards as well. Uh, if we drill down a little further, it will actually pull in the interface detail information. So 85% and out bits. Another cool little thing is if you have multiple modules, and this is actually part of NCM, so it will actually input here on our interface summary page the configuration of this interface. So for instance, let's say someone was complaining about um, latency going out to a site, going across this interface, this MPLS interface. Well, you realize that someone put this service policy output QoS for 10 megs when it actually should have been 100 meg uh, uh, a QS policy. So now, you know, that's probably that that's to be an issue, but you know that just by looking here that this doesn't look right, right? You look at the interface, you don't have to SSH to it, you just pull it up like, wow, why am I getting this receipt utilization, you know, so so bad, you know, by the 85%? Oh, here it is, my interface, right? Someone put the raw QoS statement on my interface. So quick, easy, simple, you know what the issue is right here. You don't have to take a whole bunch of extra steps. Here we're showing our in-out error discards. So you may want to look at that interface, maybe check the duplex settings, something like that. Let's back up a little bit more. The next thing I kind of wanted to show to you as well is some of the maps, right? Uh, you know, graphical maps are great. Uh, I, like, I like using them. They look good. I like knots and dashboards. Uh, we've done a lot of improvements with our maps. Uh, lately, here's a couple of different maps that we can look at. Uh, what's nice about this is that these are clickable, right? So let's say, for instance, here we have a fan issue, this one, this guy right here. Uh, we can actually click on this icon. It'll take us to the nodes details page. Uh, it'll bring in some information, go, okay, we got a, something in warning. Scroll down a little bit. What have we got in warning here? Oh, we've got a fan. So it looks like we have one of our fans, one of our three fans is out. So you know, that was nice and easy, right from the graphical user interface, you know, right from the map, we click, one click, and we actually found out what our issue is. We have a bad fan. Actually, we can see it right here on our display, uh, on our map. Uh, these are pretty nice. You can actually, these are become more dynamic. So as long as you're monitoring this router and this switch and both the interfaces that are actually connected to the devices, to each device, you're going to be able to find the, get this dynamic mapping where you don't have to go and drag and drop. It will automatically find it for you. But you do have to monitor the devices that, the, not, not only the devices, but the interfaces that are connected to each other to get that information. Uh, a lot of people go into the software-defined networks. Here's a Cisco ACI mapping. So you can actually drill down and see your different levels. Uh, if we drill down into one of these, you'll see just kind of your entity types, topology, your nodes. Awesome, good information. Good deal. All right. Uh, what's also kind of nice is that once you start monitoring it, you're going to have some of these quick little summary dashboards, like interfaces with high percent utilization. So solar winds will actually show you those things that are issues, right? The things that you know they'll bubble up. Those problems are going to bubble up, you know. And it's really easy to identify. They obviously with the color coding, red, yellow. Uh, green is good. Here we have our receipt, port channel information. So a lot of good information to cover uh, with NPM right out of the box. Very simple to install, simple to use, and simple to deploy. Uh, but what's also great, though, is it is simple, but it's also customizable. So you can go in there and change these uh, different uh, dashboards to suit you. To like, hey, maybe I just want to see things that I may be a network guy or a sysadmin guy. I don't want to see Cisco stuff. I just want to see Windows. You can do that. You can customize these, all these views, these dashboards, uh, these graphs. Uh, a lot, all these widgets are pretty much pretty customizable. So that we got into, that's kind of network NPM. Let's jump into network configuration manager. So NCM uh, is one of those tools that if you're a network person, you probably really, really need something like this if you don't have it. Uh, NCM will do things like backup, just do your daily backups of your switches, anything with the command line, ADTRAN, 3COM, anything like that, uh, F5. So, you know, you're going to get a daily backup, you can get a weekly backup, you can do backups where there's only, uh, only a backup 
my devices if things have changed, right? Then once you're doing those backups, you can do things like you know, scan for firmware vulnerabilities, uh, see things that are into support, uh, and those kind of things. See the last five config changes. So let's say we had some config, config changes on this guy. And then it'll do a comparison. So with one click, you can say, hey, well, what changed from on this East Firewall B? Oh, well, it looks like someone added this access list here. So with some remarks. So there, that might be an issue. That might be a problem. Maybe someone wasn't supposed to do that. Maybe they didn't go through the right uh, approval process. But you catch it, right? Uh, it'll actually show up. And one thing great is if you're monitoring anything in SolarWinds, I don't care if it's an interface, a node, an application, uh, you can alert and report on it. So if something would happen for here, let's say, for instance, if there is a change on this East Firewall B, you can actually have an email sent to you, a notification of some sort, said, hey, someone made changes to this access list or to this firewall. You know, you go back and, and go, hey, you know, and talk to whoever did it. You know, hey, you know, why'd you do this? This wasn't approved, or maybe it was approved, or maybe you caused an issue, that kind of thing. Another cool thing about Network Configuration Manager is the compliance piece. So once we start backing up our devices, we can start reading the configurations and finding out what's not in compliance. Uh, typically, uh, something like, I don't care if it's PCI, HIPAA, just a SIG, one thing that's usually pretty standard is that you have to have your line console, your session timeout, set for, uh, one second here. Let's go down. Uh, set for set for a specific time. That's not letting me show it here. Back up one. Okay, here we go. Uh, where you need to actually have you know a, a, a particular config that needs to be set up. If you notice here, we have green, yellow, and blue. Uh, these are what we call our rules. So these are actually things that are being detected. So for instance, we have a little violation here. We can look, and what we're looking at here is that. Uh, we're not seeing any IP redirects. So this is an issue. So the things that we can do here, though, we can execute the script on this remote, on this node only, or we can do it across all nodes in violation. So we can create a script. If this is an issue, and we can execute it to all, have, a, have it correct all those different devices that are in alert, or uh, that are not in compliance, and fix that very quickly. The other thing that I like about Network Configuration Manager, let me go back here, is that you can do things like uh, make changes, right? You can do bulk changes. You can do things like, you know, uh, enable, uh, set an enable password for Cisco IOS. Uh, log, changing the login banner. Maybe you have to go in and change the login banner for security issues, maybe every month, every week, or something like that. So not only, and typically, if you had to do that, change in the login banners or maybe change in the, the console, you'd have to SSH into each device, make those changes, copy, paste, write mem, you know, and do the next one. Uh, here, you can actually just select, let's say, we want to change in the login. Uh, we can uh, define and run variables, and we can push this out. So here, and then we can select the, the devices we want to push out, and hit next. Uh, we add the login banner text, whatever we want, and we can push that out. Nice and easy. It makes it really clean. Saves you bunches of time um, for you know keeping the uh, keeping your policies and, and, and keeping within compliance. All right, let's look at it. now some other kind of cool little things you can do as well is you can do firmware upgrades. So you can schedule firmware upgrades for your devices, which is really important analysis after COVID nineteen. Uh, a lot of you know offices probably you know you don't have a lot of people in them. Doesn't mean that you can't you don't need to upgrade your iOSs right on your switches, uh, those kind of things. So here you can actually simplify it. Uh, we have a firmware upgrade for instance, like you want to upgrade all your 3750s on your first floor. Uh, you can set that up, run a job, uh, and schedule it, uh, and then you can have all those upgrades done like in one night, and not have to go hand by hand to do that. So you can schedule that and do it in a bulk a bulk change. Let's see what else we got here. So jobs into support, compliance, so uh, and configuration management. So yeah, all right. So all right. So the next thing I kind of want to go into a little bit. So kind of into the same network, the NetMan path is NetFlow. Okay. 
So with NPM, we're going to get our key stats, right? We're going to get our bandwidth usage. We're going to get our memory or CP. We're going to get a good baseline of what we're using now. Uh, with Network Configuration Manager, we're going to get the backups, right? Okay, so I'm going to sleep a little better at night that I'm getting the backups on my switches, on my routers, on my Juniper devices, on my ASAs. So if something does blow up, that I'll have a backup, and all I have to do is do a hot swap, you know, and paste in the configuration into my device. Uh, and then NCM also with compliance, right? So if we're looking for some kind of compliancy for disastigs, HIPAA, PCI, anything like that, uh, Network Configuration Manager will go look at our configurations and find things that aren't in compliance. And then report that on to you, report that to you, and then give you the option to, to remediate either, you know, one by one or in a group. Now, what Network Traffic Analyzer does, NTA, is it takes those NetFlow, JFlow uh, information from your devices and actually puts in a nice readable kind of graphic. Uh, there's a lot of good inf information here when you get with NetFlow. Uh, what you'll see is your top uh, 10 conversations, your NetFlow sources, you know, your endpoints. Uh, the best, the story I have about NetFlow and how it kind of worked for me was uh, now, I was uh, a network uh, engineer, right? I was ad admin. I was uh, had three or four locations. Uh, I was using Network Configuration Manager and Network Performance Monitor to monitor all my devices, but I was having some bandwidth issues at my my California location. Uh, we installed NetFlow, turned it on. I started looking at it. I was getting my top ten conversations. Uh, my very number one top ten conversation was World of Warcraft. So I had some IT guy, big surprise, uh, in California, that was killing a little time playing World of Warcraft on my network. Uh, he was consuming a fair bit of, bit of bandwidth, not a lot, but it really did look bad. So those are the kind of things that you know NetFlow can point out. It can point out things for like different countries, which I really like. So if you have an issue, uh, let's do this country's one. So, for instance, maybe you see a lot of stuff. You have your NetFlow, and you see a lot of stuff going off to maybe China or North Korea or something like that. Uh, that's probably an issue. You know, you want to see where that information is coming from and where is it going. Uh, you could drill down into like this North Korea one. Look all the way to here. We can drill down into our ingress bytes, and it looks like we have quite a few servers that are sending stuff off to North Korea. Uh, all these endpoints here, these 175, 45, 176 IP addresses. Uh, that could be an issue. You know, what's going off in North Korea? Was I hacked? You know, so NTA isn't really a truly security tool, but it can be used like that. Uh, and what's great about uh, NetFlow is that you can actually set up alerts on flows. Uh, so if you do see stuff going off to China, India, somewhere in the check block, uh, North Korea, something like that, uh, you can set up an alert uh, and get notified, and then you can investigate. And you know, maybe so, maybe I was hacked, or maybe that is normal normal bandwidth traffic going out to China for some reason. But what's important is that it, it, it shows you, right, so you know what's going across it, so you're not guessing. Uh, like, here's a little flow navigator, so if you're looking like this, basically like a filter, so if you're looking for certain things, like from certain countries, or maybe you're looking for certain applications, protocols, certain endpoints, uh, you can do that here as well. Um, endpoints, so you can create these filters. Then here's where you can create the flow, uh, your NetFlow alert. So, for instance, if we do, uh, so let's see if this will pull up anything. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, NetFlow is one of those products, too, that can give you some money back as well. You know, it'll save you some money, kind of be a return on investment, because if you're having bandwidth issues, and you not and don't know exactly what's going across your bandwidth. You know you're probably going to end up putting you know adding more bandwidth, you know, buying more bandwidth for you, for yourself. Well, now you can actually look say, hey, you know what? I got a lot of this Netflix traffic, or I got a lot of this other traffic that's going across. I'll just police it, right? I'll police my YouTube traffic. I'll police my Netflix traffic. Those kind of things. And that way, you don't have to buy more bandwidth. You just you know police it. And they get less bandwidth for non-business critical um, uh, data. So NetFlow is one of those tools that will, it's kind of multi-purpose. You know, not only does it give you that, that baseline information of what's going across your network, but you know, it can also be kind of in a security uh, platform as well. All right, good deal. So the next thing I wanted to go into was device tracker, universal device tracker. 
Now, we talked a little bit about UDT earlier. And what UDT can do is actually kind of track your endpoints. Uh, and what it, what it does first is it will go through and look at all your devices, your Cisco, your Dell, your Juniper, map out all your ports uh, as well. So let's say, for instance, you have an access port somewhere in a building and it's filling up. Well, here you can actually monitor that and see, okay, this node is using 100% of its ports. Uh, it also does some very good uh, access point uh, uh, monitoring as well. For instance, you can actually uh, look at these access for this access point, see what end users are attached to it, what SSIDs attached to it, uh, the name of the access point as well. And actually, you can go in a little further by clicking into the client information. So this client, this PC133, looks like it's been used at a couple of different spots, two different access points, it's direct connected. Let's you know when the last time it was seen. So UDT is going to give you that information that, hey, where is this thing going, right? What's, what's happening to it? Why, why is it, uh, you know, why is this, you know, why, why am I not, why are people logging in? Why is this user over here logging in uh, so many times, right, to these different devices? So back up here a little bit. Scroll over here. And what UDT does as well, so on your first initial discovery, it basically puts everything that you have in a whitelist, right? Uh, after that, anytime you do a discovery, you're going to get rogue devices, and something gets discovered that's not on that original scan, it's going to show up in this little rogue device uh, widget. So things you can do is like add this to the whitelist, watch this device, hey, this is interesting, I want to see where this device goes, you can put this on a watch list as well. Uh, then here you have your little widget for device watch lists. Uh, and then your usual login information. So Universal Device Tracker will actually plug into your active uh, domain uh, server and pull information out. For instance, uh, let's take a look at Ryan Wood. Uh, Ryan Wood, let's see, logged into a couple of different endpoints. Looks like he logged into the demo lab and this one as well. Uh, you may ask, well, hey, why is this guy you know, logging into this lab, and how often was he doing it? So with UDT, you're tracking people, users logging into devices, you know, for you know issues that pop up or for things that might, you know, someone will, hey, why were you in there, Jimmy? You know, uh, you know, you weren't supposed to be in that server after hours, right? And you broke something. So UDT keeps everybody honest, right? I've used this before uh, in a real world scenario where someone was complaining that. Uh, they, you know, they weren't getting logged in, uh, that they weren't logging into, and there's actually a, a finance application, that they weren't logging into this financial uh, server. And I went back to UDT, and it looks like, no, you logged in at 2 o'clock last night at 2 a.m. Um, you know, can you explain if that wasn't you, then someone has your account and is using your password. So UDT is one of those things that keeps everybody honest. It does very good for tracking. So especially in your you know, secured environments where you need to know where these users are going at, especially if you're going to you know, your zero trust kind of thing, right? If, you're, if you want to your zero trust, this is de definitely you know, something to look at UDT for keeping everybody honest, especially if you don't trust everybody. Or that's the, that's the, the idea you take for everything. All right, good information. That kind of covers most of the network stuff. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit of the application, the server stuff. Uh, the, our, our big product for that is a server application monitor. Uh, so Sam will pull in your uh, application services, components, uh, and those kind of things. So you can make sure, like for instance here, we have an Apache right, server, uh, and we're watching all these different Apache services. On this one server, if we drill down a little further, we'll pull some information in. So here's our application details. Uh, these are the components we're actually monitoring. Uh, applications, availability uptime, uh, any database information. And then here we have what we call App Stack, which actually gives you a top to bottom kind of visual look at how things are connected to this particular application. And the way that this works is, for instance, we're going to start with applications. So let's see here. Let's just start over here. So this application is assigned to this database. This database is on these two servers. These servers are attached to these hosts. These hosts are attached to these volumes. These volumes are attached to these LUNs. These LUNs are these pools and these storage arrays. 
So the app uh, insight, uh, app stack environment uh, widget actually shows you kind of a top to bottom or kind of what's everything that's related for this application. So uh, maybe there is a problem. You look, well, it's not the application. Well, it looks like we have some server issues. So you can kind of narrow down it and go, hey, it's not a network. It's not the database. It's the server issue. Uh, once again, you know, keeping everybody honest. Uh, I'm a network guy. I've had a finger pointed at me so many times by the server guys. Um, and SolarWinds was always the tool that I went to to prove, uh, prove me right or prove me wrong. Uh, some other cool things with Application Monitor is, yeah, let's get back to our summary page, is we can create some application uh, maps. Uh, for instance, here we have like Active Directory, Office, those kind of things. Let's take a look at Active Directory. So just like our network map, we can do things with our application map and have a nice little map here. Uh, where we show everything that's connected, the links and interface, the drive information. So if you're monitoring your Active Directory um, infrastructure, you know, with SolarWinds, you want to make sure that, you know, your CPU, your memory, your storage, make sure the thing is up, make sure the latency. So now if people have issues with Active Directory or have, maybe have problems with logging into certain uh, uh, controllers or certain devices, you can come back here with your map, create your nice little map, uh, drill down into your maps, and find all this good information. So let's see here. Let's see this one. Uh, and then also what's kind of neat is we have some active mappings where you can actually go back in time and see, okay, well, what's changed? What went up? What went down? Uh, looks like we have some gap in monitoring as well. So you can go through and say, okay, during this time frame, you know, I had a few things in alarm, but during this time frame, I actually had some things that were uh, down or having some issues. And you can click down and do some perf stack information as well. Okay. Now, one thing I did not cover, and I me back up just a little bit on this, is NetPath services. All right, so we did touch a little bit about NetPath and how NetPath is sort of like a trace route. I wouldn't say it's on steroids. I think it's a little bit more uh, developed than that. But basically what it does, it maps out from a point A to point Z across a, an open network. Now here's a real simple one. For instance, from left to right, uh, we're starting at this device and we're mapping out this path from this server, this Windows 2016 server. We're jumping through here to this core, to this WAN. Uh, all the way through to these uh, internal unmonitored devices, all the way through uh, to our Windows 2016 server. So this is nice, you know, kind of basic, but it can get a lot more complicated, especially if you're going out to the network uh, or over it. So let's go look at this uh, hybrid Azure one. It's always a good one to look at. So let's take a look and how it gets, can get really complicated. Actually, no, it's not that complicated. Back this up a little bit. And here we go. Ah, here we go. This is the one I was looking for. All right. So, I don't know if y'all can see that. But here things can actually get a little bit more complicated. So here we're seeing our, from the left, we're starting here. We're, we're mapping out our path all the way through this device. We can expand here. Looks like this is our, uh, our Time Warner connection. And then once we get to this device, it actually splits out into three or four other paths, right? So we have three different paths we can go through. Uh, so if there's an issue in any one of these paths, it will actually show up. If you notice here towards the far right, we actually do have an issue. Uh, here we have, looks like we have some leak latency this way. It looks like we have some more leak latency down here. So uh, this would have been great when I was doing some, uh, when I was working for an enterprise company, we had a, uh, Bunch of remote offices uh, across Europe, uh, France, Germany, Poland, that kind of thing. And every once in a while, uh, maybe once every two, three times a quarter, I would get a call saying, hey, my France office, I'm getting really low latency, a lot, a lot, a lot, of, can't get to my files. Okay, great. I would do a trace route, you know, I trace route at once, it might, you know, jump from uh, New York uh, to Germany across, uh, you know, British Telecom or whatever. But a lot of times I'll do a trace route, and it would actually jump over to India and then make its way back to Germany and then go over through France. Well, if I would have had this NetPath set up, I could have actually 
been able to be more proactive with this and say, hey, you know what, it looks like we're having issues across this link, this you know, fourth link that, you know, went down. Uh, so it'd be nice to have this information. It gives you just more visibility, you know, to say, hey, it's not me, it's this, right? This is the problem. Uh, and NetPath is one of those things that can kind of demystify uh, what's going on from point A to point Z when you're going across the, the, the public internet, right? There's multiple different paths to go across to, you know, Google, Netflix, or whatever, uh, and being able to actually monitor all those different paths at one time and see when something within that path that you really have no control of goes down, but you're still able to monitor and alert on it. So NetPath is a really powerful tool for that. It really gives you that deep, deep visibility. All right, guys, let me press on a little bit more. Uh, the next thing I wanted to get into is server configuration. Now, uh, STM is a uh, new pr a bit of a new product, uh, but what it does is a lot like NCM. For instance, we can go and take a look and see if things have been changed, uh, network items have been changed, uh, those kind of things. Let's drill down a little bit and take a look at this guy right here. So, all right. So here's kind of our configuration details. Uh, we have policies that are assigned to this one. Here we have like this hardware inventory, inventory policy. It looks like we had a driver uh, that was updated or that was changed. It looks like we have a baseline mismatch. Uh, same thing with our software inventory. It looks like we had an OS up, uh, update maybe, software install. Uh, MSL SQL SQL, same thing. So SCM is going to give you that same thing that NCM does, that baseline, the change configured, the, the changes uh, that happen. You know, hey, why did someone change, you know, uh, added a driver? You know, why did someone update it? You know, they weren't supposed to do patches this week, those kind of things. So now you can actually track these changes uh, on the servers and actually go, okay, well, maybe I need to, you know, uh, roll these, these updates back because they're causing issues, those kind of things. Now, another great feature, or uh, probably more than a feature, uh, they added to SCM is disassisted uh, compliances. So, you know, if anyone's ever done disassisted, they are a pain. Uh, but we've actually simplified that by quite a bit. Currently, the uh, disassisted of the compliance policies only support 2016 servers, but what it does for, for instance, once you start adding this compliance uh, to like this, your servers and it starts doing these checks, it will actually evaluate these different rules, shows you kind of what unknown rules are, and then what rules have failed. Uh, so for instance, let's take a look at this Windows Server 2016 SIG one. All right. Here we're seeing, okay, 60, uh, pass rule 65%. These are the rules that failed. So now you can actually go and check these different rules and see if they're in compliance, uh, see what needs to be checked. Uh, beforehand, you'd actually have to go and hand check all this information, um, compare it with a spreadsheet, and go back and, and, and fix them. Here it, we scanned, I think, a couple of these servers, and it took us like 30, 45 minutes to get all this information back about just the stigs, what needs to be, well, what rules fell, what needs to be fixed. Uh, it literally saves us hours and hours of work. So if you are a disastig uh, customer, uh, SCM is definitely something you want to look into. The uh, last thing I wanted to check, because we're kind of running a little short on time, was virtualization. All right, so uh, vMan, Virtualization Manager. vMan supports three different kind of virtualization platforms. VMware, Hyper-V, and Nutanix. Uh, I'm going to pick on VMware a little bit. So what vMan can do, it can do quite a few, you know, it can give you that single pane of glass for maybe you're running Hyper-V and VMware or, or that kind of thing, mix, where you, know, you, you want to put everything in one pane of glass. Well, you can do that. Uh, but with the information that will pull out is, for instance, you, know, you have your vCenter, you have your data centers, you have your clusters, and then you have you know, your different clients that are under your, your hosts, right? Uh, and you can drill down at any point in here and actually pull up some more information. For instance, we have uh, an issue here uh, with some application monitoring, some storage arrays. So it'll actually pull, like for here you're looking at your ESX host. So you're pulling your fan information, your power supply, your temperature, your disk. So you're looking at the host level. But then again, you can actually drill down a little bit more uh, if you want to look at your uh, virtual machines. So from this uh, host, you can drill down into your virtual machines. 
and get all your good stats for your virtual machines, like uh, vital stats and so on. Now, the cool thing for another cool thing here for virtualization is with the recommendations. Uh, I talked earlier about you know balance across your virtualization. Well, what VM VMAN could do, it can go and take a look at all across your virtualization and make recommendations. For instance, uh, let's take the CPU one, CPU memory utilization. So it's actually making a recommendation to increase the number of CPUs on this VM from four to two because you know the threshold you know, it's been below the minimum threshold 95 percent of the time. So this is resources that we can take back, right, and put those to someplace better used. And it's really simple to make changes via VMAN setup. You just click here, and then you can do apply, select it, and then it's going to give you okay power off, give you whole steps, VMs. What's it going to do? It's going to go from four to two, and then you can either perform now or schedule it for after hours. So really, really nice, really clean. Really makes it simple for you to balance uh, your virtualization uh, infrastructure uh, and make sure that things are you know in the right place where you, where a server doesn't have too much memory or storage, where you can give that resources to a server that maybe has to you know has doesn't have enough those kind of things. Now, one other great thing about virtual uh, VMAN is that not only can it do current uh, recommendations, but it can do things like capacity planning as well. So you can create some of these reports where or run these capacity, these you know what if scenarios, right? Like let's say what if, like if we expand this one. Like here's one I was done earlier. We look at this report. Is that you know this is what we're looking for? We're looking at our current is 21 VMs, and we want to go up to 30. We're going to have 51 total, and currently we're at 57 cores. We're projected at 65 RAM disk space and whatever. Here's where we're simulating our VMs. We're adding five uh, small ones, 20 medium ones, and five large ones, and then we're going to add five hosts. Uh, here it kind of gives you a little trending, our CPU, our memory disk usage, available capacity for virtual capacities. Uh, we have space for 35 more. And then it'll say, okay, additional host recommended, uh, you know, eight more cores, 64 more gigs, and 1.5 terabyte required over you know, zero amount of years. So we're using a balanced model. So good information. So uh, this is the this perfect for let's say your boss comes up to you, you go, hey, uh, you know, we have all these people working remotely. I need to add you know three more VMs for my cluster. Can we support it? You're like, I don't know. What you can do is actually run a report, say I'm going to add 20 more VMs to this cluster or to this host. You know, what's my recommendation? And what's great is that it actually Demon looks back at the historical information and kind of trends that out for you as well. Uh, one other thing, let's go look in. Obviously, the one other last thing I want to show you here is sprawl. <laughs> you know, here it shows uh, you know your VMs over over allocated or under allocated. So here, you know, your sprawl is your difference, right? Your difference between, you know, systems that are over-allocated and under-allocated. So all these 10 VMs that are over-allocated, you know, you can reduce a lot of these CPUs and maybe give some of the CPU power back to uh, our East GNS3 VM. So it saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of money, and you can make these changes, you know, very, very simple. All right. Last thing, we're running really short on time, I think. Is server uh, security event manager? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, our sim product, and basically what that does is it, it's going to pull logs, uh, security logs, event logs, application logs uh, from either your your network devices, any of your servers, uh, ESX hosts. You can actually do some syslogging as well, and it'll actually pull in all this all your logging information. It kind of put it on. It can do a, a few different things. We have a nice little dashboard we can add to it as well, where it shows like losers, users log on by users. Why is Billy Bob the log in so many times? Uh, log on by failures, that which could be a security issue. So we're trying to brute force it. Uh, but there's also things you can do is here look at different events that are coming in in real time. Or right out of the box, you have different security incidents that you can pull up, and you can drill down into this. Uh, and you can do things like you know analyze your historical data uh, and pull different information in from there as well. Uh, so a lot of good information. Looks like we're wrapping up on time. Uh, Mark, I think I'm good from here. You got anything? 
you have any questions? Yeah, actually, Kevin, we uh, well, thanks so much for the demo and for the presentation. Um, we did have a question that came up around VMAN, and they're wondering how how does VMAN come up with the recommendations it's making? Right. Yeah. So it, it, there's some, some special magic sauce that goes on the end. It's going to look at everything at, across all your your resources, your ESX hosts, your clusters, and do some you know some calculations on okay, you know, a trending. Right. You, you definitely need the trending for for this to work for the the recommendations. Uh, once it gets the trending, it'll get that information and then make the re recommendations. There's a lot of kind of magic that goes on behind the scenes, but it just takes all. All that, all that information, you know, how much CPU does a host have? How much memory does a host have? How many VMs does a host on? You know, how many hosts are in a cluster? You know, uh, how many heavy clients and how, or how many heavy VMs, you know, big VMs? How many, you know, little VMs, medium VMs? So it takes all that information, kind of consolidates it, and then it'll go from there and give you that recommendation. Okay, great. Um, you know, I think you answered this one, but it also about the uh, SCM compliance features. I think you said Windows um, 2016, and but which yeah. which uh, yeah. Sorry, go currently, ahead. yeah, currently we're they're only supporting uh, 2016. Uh, we do have other releases that are, are planned. I don't know exactly when, but currently for the server configuration manager for the uh, just a state compliance piece, it's only 2016. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so I think we really need to wrap up here because we have a couple more slides to, to, to review. But if we didn't get to your question, we'll certainly respond in writing afterwards. Um, and thank you for the input there. Um, so also, uh, you know, we have additional resources that are available to you on the topics of the t um, today's webinar. So you can check out the different use case pages and web white papers that are there for your use. We also um, want to just thank you for participation, and thanks, Kevin, for the demo and, and his, his time today. Um, we also, how, how you can contact us, this is our phone numbers and email addresses and LinkedIn, other ways that you can reach us on the, the government team here. And just one last slide, we have an event coming up here next month on Flat Camp 2020. This is an annual event that we have that has like 40 or 50 different technical sessions and you can schedule and sign up for it here. Um, it's, it's a pretty good event for, it's put on just by the IT folks. It's, it's not a, a sales and marketing thing at all. Anyway, well thanks so much again everyone for your participation and, and attendance and it's a wrap. <laughs>